Welcome to another episode of It Works in My Machine, the podcast that is powered by TimeCamp. And if you're new to the show, I'm Carolina, and all I do here is simply speaking with guests from the software development environment. Specifically, we decided to pick companies from the ID services and ID consulting industry. Today's episode will be probably a little bit different from the ones that would be expected from us. Um, I want to introduce you Alexander Wolodarsky, who is a CEO of the company called uh, Lemon.io. It's basically a pro- platform that connects software engineer with startup that is looking for software developer or vice versa that helps um, a startup to connect with a software developer, software engineer um, that is looking for a job. Kind of like a Tinder, but inside of the uh, software development environment. Alex will tell us more about the story behind their brand and all the experience and tips uh, that he can share with uh, others uh, in terms of uh, managing the business like this. But before we dive into the conversation, I wanted to say that Lemon is one of the um, Ukrainian ID companies uh, that literally had to face a war, a new reality that war brought to all Ukrainians and Ukraine in general. So uh, this is also going to be discussed today in our episode. And yeah, let's see how it works on the Lemons machine and also what it takes to manage a business in a country where economy is disrupted um, because of the war. Hi, Alex. It's really nice to see you here. Before we start to talk about all of these specific questions regarding the Lemon, uh, your company and the situation that all the businesses are going through right now in Ukraine, I wanted to ask you one simple yet very important question. Um, how are you doing, Alex? Um, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you, you know, everything goes with the comparison. So I'm okay. To compare it to the rest of the rest of the rest of the country. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here. So um, how about you taking this um, remote mic and telling us a few words about uh, yourself and have this a little throwback to the moment when you decided to start Lemon. So basically a company that is supporting a software development uh, sector. Uh, my background is mostly sales and uh, um, this company, uh, the, the name of the company is Lemonio, but before that, we started as, as a different business. Um, it was started, I think, more than six years ago. And uh, uh, it, was, it started like a side hustle because I, I, had a, I had a job. I, I lived in Israel back then, and Israel is very expensive to leave. Uh, like you, I don't know, very expensive. I, I, I'm trying to compare something with Ukraine, but uh, very expensive. Uh, and you take any any opportunity to make more money, especially when you're a newcomer. So... Um, Someone was looking for a developer and I helped them find a developer. And uh, they brought all, all, all their friends uh, because they they were uh, a, they, they had a small agency and they brought all their agency friends who had their own agencies or small businesses. And this is how it started. So I got to, um, I think, like at least 10K of GMV without even trying because I, I was not even looking. People were just emailing and calling me uh, looking for, you know to do some projects. <clears throat> and uh, only in some time, I think uh, after six months, I, I realized that it get, it can get you know it can get to significant income because before that it was just uh, it was is very small, but it was helping. And um, at some point, I, I brought one of my good friends who became a co-founder and uh, hired a few people, and uh, it decided to develop into a business. At the beginning, it was something like Uber for web development projects. So the client came with a project. Usually, it's something small, two, five, ten, twenty hours of work, uh, and we would automatically add a developer to that project. Something like Uber, when you push a button and they assign you a developer, you don't choose between developers. So it was like that. <clears throat> we grew something to um, 
to something um, to something like um, I think 100k of GMV, but it, it didn't it didn't grow well, and uh, I didn't do any sales or marketing. It, actually, most of that came from referrals. Uh, <clears throat> but at some point, I started doing marketing, and uh, uh, it was successful. But but when I started doing marketing, I went on Quora and I um, I did a lot on Quora and uh, other content marketing. I went to online communities and spoke a lot over there. So we got a lot of incoming incoming leads, but those were not developer not clients we were looking for um, because um, they usually came to us asking not to do a project but to to find a developer. Um, and usually they were looking for a developer full time or part time, but he, the 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 um, the the checks were more you know m- much larger much bigger checks but um, it was not kind of business we wanted to do so we went back and forth thinking if we want to do this or not uh, you know we said okay let's try it again to do this business and didn't grow at some point I realized my, my co-founder has shown me that uh, look we have ninety percent of income comes from those clients that we don't want <laughs> that we don't want so maybe we try to do the business with other clients that uh, and we actually grow so then we decided to rebrand and re- and pivot to um different types of it's just different business different types of business and, and model and also brand and it was around um it was around um um beginning of 2020 so we launched a new brand and COVID hit <laughs> this is what i remember that but since then we grew um we grew more than five times already, if I'm not mistaken, uh, six times already. <clears throat> and uh, the, the the business is doing well. We grew to a team of already 50-something people, and uh, it's been doing well. So basically what we do right now is we are a marketplace of edit engineers. Um, we we have two types of clients. From one side, we have engineers who are looking for work. Um, they come to us. We test, interview them, make sure they have all the, all the qualities that our clients are looking for. And when the clients come, to, or the, the the buyers, the startups come to us. We also look at them and see if they if those are projects that our developers are looking for. And then when we are sure that you know those are the right people, uh, we match them um, based by skills um, and types of projects um, they they, they want to do. So when it comes to these clients uh, you uh, mentioned, you're working for, you're working with right now, um, are you focused on specific niches or is it more generic? And you're like just looking for good talents in the, on, in this area of software development. First of all, we have both developers and and uh, as as we are marketplace, we have both developers clients. It's not like we hire them like in a regular outsourcing business. Uh, so. Those are clients from the other one side. Those are developers who are looking for jobs. On on the buyer side, um, in startups that are looking for developers, we usually target small um, small startups, up to hundred people in the team. Um, this is for now. They're usually looking for one to to, to five developers, uh, and this is who we serve. In terms of um, in terms of uh, tech stack, uh, we go by demand mostly. So I think. At least fifty percent or of our base is is JavaScript that is very popular, um, but you know the rest is the rest of technologies. We work mostly work with um, web mobile development and uh, um, and a little bit data science, but no hardware um, or deep tech. So you mentioned that you've experienced already a lot of relaunch processes with your with your company. Uh, since the 2020, uh, how uh, did your company change in terms of um, department, amount of people that are working uh, on your team, uh, maybe some structure that are going on inside of your organization, um, how it changed um, during these two uh, last years and how it looks like now comparing to the to that first moment. The, the thing is that, uh, first of all, when, when COVID hit, we lost um, 80% of our clients. Um, and it was good and bad for us, bad because we were at risk to losing company. Um, we were, I think, 12 people back then, and I might, or 15 people back then. But um, part of those people were supporting the old business model, and we killed it. So we lost also a few people back then. Not back then. It was already. I'm sorry. It was already uh, 
it was already summer so it was a few months but but by by that time we were already feeling very strong uh <clears throat> in terms of how we restructure the company is at the beginning when we have very few people every person is a unicorn like you do everything your partner is doing everything every person that comes they they're kind of unicorn in, in terms of skills you know those bad job descriptions where you're looking for a marketer and you list every marketing thing you know is available social media performance marketing seo brand this and this so so in startup this is a reality just you don't you don't find those people through through job boards you actually find people who are incredible and then you give them any project and they can do it so this is types of people you have at the beginning <clears throat> then as you grow you need to specify and you need to delegate and you need to really specify. And like at the beginning, marketing person did everything and brand campaigns and content and everything and everything. And then you need to find people who are better at something specific. So, you know, this happens with everything. I did marketing and sales at the beginning. I did all sales. and all... Okay. At the beginning, I did everything. Customer support and sales and marketing. Um, I didn't do finances because I was dumb. To do that, but I I, uh, I I found a co-founder who was a good friend of mine, and he's much better in operation and finances. <clears throat> but the rest I needed, and then you know when I was ready to hire our first support person, I hired the support person. So I delegated this, and this this happens with everything. So even <clears throat> in and this is the same happens with employees. When you hire the first salesperson, they you know she did everything. Kate, she's still with us, amazing person. She's now is a lead lead salesperson. Um, she did everything. She, she just took over my job of sales that I did before. Then we saw, okay, we need to structure this a little bit and break down the process. So we changed our whole structure and hired people who did specific on, on you know, who did. Um, now we have a person who does pre-sales. Before that, they do, um, they do qualification. And, uh, and also on the other side, we have a person who matches because before, Salesperson was the person who said, "Okay, this developer and this uh, and this company, you know, are good fit." But now, um, now we have actually a team that does that. So you, at the beginning, you you're a unicorn, and you know, at the end, you're you're, you're specifying, specifying, go deeper and deeper. So, like in general, how many departments are there right now uh, in uh, Lemon IO? Um, so I'll just say it's, um, sales, um, sales is, is, is actually sales and, and customer success. That is a, a, something I, uh, we grew into and we didn't know about existence, but now we get, now I don't know exactly, but last year, 25% of new projects were coming from existing clients. Um, there is a, you know, good source of, 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 of new business. Uh, um, so sales marketing, um, engineering, um, operations, HR, what else? Ah, um, talent acquisition is, is a, the biggest department. Where's the headquarters of your company located um, in Ukraine? We, we don't have a headquarters. Um, we, had off, we had an office for some time, but it was mostly like uh, we, had a, uh, we had an office, but it, it was not mandatory to come to the office. Everyone used it to their benefit, not not as a you know not as a um, um, how to say this. I'm sorry. It was not. You didn't have to come to office, but if you wanted to go to office, so some people spend there one day or two day two days or a week or never. Uh, but we didn't have a headquarters. Most of the, most of people were in Kiev, um, and then the rest of the country. But um, we don't have a head office. Okay, so another crisis moment, not only for your company, as you said that you started off with your uh, relaunch uh, when the COVID hit, but um, another crisis moment and turning point, uh, not only for you, but also for all Ukrainians and Ukraine in general, uh, 24th of February. You said most of your employees uh, were living in uh, Kyiv, even though they didn't uh, necessarily have to come to office to work because they had to, they had an opportunity to work from uh, whenever they were. 
how it looks like now after the war started. What were your first steps as a company that you took? Maybe some relocation plan for your employees? Um, anything you can say about that? Just share the experience. So we started, uh, we started thinking about this before the war, as everyone did, because there was a lot of noise, a lot of you know, assumptions, and a lot of hype in media. Um, um, we, so we, we didn't do very well with this. Um, so what we did, what we did well is we decided to give two, two months of salary advance to people because, um, um, you know, we, we just, you know, like we were never at war. Okay. <laughs> to, to be honest, I was, I was living in Israel during war in, in 2014, uh, for, 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 for a little bit, but even people who were in a, uh, who lived in Ukraine during 2014, um, you know, the war wa was on the east and uh, you didn't experience actual invasion. Uh, and, and I was living in Israel and it was a it was a full scale war, but it was not an invasion of Israel. It was a lot of missiles, a lot of. So we were never at war. We couldn't realize, like, what are the what are you know, what are you dealing with? So we thought, OK, let, let us do this. Let us give people two, 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 two months salary advance so they have cash. And, you know, in case, uh, you know, there was invasion and uh, we didn't believe it as a lot of people. Uh, but let's say it happens, people and, you know, it, something can happen to the bank system or, you know, the, the, the people, everyone would try to get cash. So it would be hard to get it. So let's 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 do this. Also, we assured everyone that um, that, uh, you know, whatever happens until the company is still alive, everyone will be will remain their jobs and everyone will still get their um their salaries even if they're mobilized or volunteering or you know in occupied co countries we said you're gonna lose your job only in case if you relocate to russia you know you, you're done we don't want to do anything with you but if you are you know we have people who can't work because they mobilized like there are two people in the army and one person mobilized but he's not all the time there um there are people who volunteer there are people who have to have their relative help their relatives there are people who um, or in you know places and cannot work or can only partially work. So we assured everyone that they will have their jobs, whatever happens, until we can pay salaries. Uh, this is what we did well. But in terms of um, something actionable, in terms of uh, relocation, we didn't do well. So we thought if something happens, we gave them address in Lviv and said, "This is the address you go. You know, there's no connection, and you can go here. We'll assist you in Kiev." But we didn't realize that if something happens, there will be it would be really hard to get around and it was really hard to get around you know all the all the roads were, were packed and it was very heavy traffic and most of people couldn't get out only until until a few days after the war started also we didn't realize that Lviv was already packed back then and as soon as everything happened it, it became even more packed and also we didn't realize the, the 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 major thing we didn't realize is you know people have their own plans you know they they they, they wouldn't rely on us they will probably First of all, they have to take care of their families. They have mothers, sisters, brothers, um, you know, significant others. I, I am repping. <laughs> uh, but uh, so when everything happened, we, first of all, we were helpless because we couldn't we couldn't actually organize everything um, because, you know, there were no buses. There were nothing was actually working. And people started making their own, own plans. Someone wanted to stay. Like there was there was a girl who lived with her mother in Kharkov. And even when, when the war started, they didn't want to move because they were afraid to lose their possessions and like like the rest of the world. Some people who just, you know, didn't move. They, they didn't want to move. They uh, said, okay, this is my place. I'm staying. I'll stay here. So all our dreams that we're going to organize working space for everyone and a safe shelter for everyone somewhere in Lviv or nearby were, were very naive. So we, we were not able to do that. But we support people where they are, uh, and uh, whoever needs financial support, we support. Um, we, um, what else we do? Uh, we do meetups in Lviv uh, when people, you know, when people come. A lot of people went to leave, but it, to be honest, I think only only ten people are in Lviv or something like that. There are people who are relocated to other countries. We help everyone who asks for help, um, um, you know, for, with the relocation, with finances, anything. We even have a separate group where you know one can post, uh, one can say that I need help there, and you know people will help with information. 
uh, research or uh, with the with the with the finances. This is how we do, and we donate all the profits to the to to to, to the victory. And everyone does this. We're not we're not unique. Everyone does this. Everyone is donating everything they can to 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 the victory, and it's it's not us. Like everyone does it around. Like all the companies I see are involved. There's there's very few. And I don't know them that are silent or, or, you know, not actionable. So. Okay. So we covered the employees part, but how about the um, market that you were providing your services to? Um, have you been operating on Russian market before the war? No, because, um, because we, we, we founded the company when the war started already. So we founded the company in, 20, in 2015. So it was already a year of war. And we didn't even think of this, you know, like we didn't. Were you thinking about the expansion of your market, uh, the market expansion of uh, on other countries you have never been operating on after this full scale war started in Ukraine, or you just kept um, pushing with the plan on markets you've been um, earlier on, how it looked like? So. Like if you're asking about Russia, Russia was not never on the table for us in terms of clients or um, developers or anything. Like we didn't want to do anything with Russia. Um, and uh, in terms of other countries, so um, I don't remember exactly. I think in the in the second in the second quarter last year or in the third quarter last year, on the third quarter we started expanding to other countries. So we opened Poland, Bulgaria, and Romania. Uh, almost nine months ago was it yeah well, almost nine months ago and uh, my week were kind of lazy you know because ukraine market was working for us and like why so we had i think like maybe five percent of developers from other countries but again like we, we were not doing much <clears throat> so we understood that we need to to um um we need to expand and you know it's it's a very shitty place to be if your business is just very um, you know, in, in one place and it's very risky. Uh, so we understood that, but we didn't actually do anything much. Um, we ac- started accepting, um, f- um, we started accepting um, applications from those countries and we did some marketing, but not much. Um, so when the war started, we started, uh, we started to do it more and, and more and more. Now we're open in 25 countries in Europe. Uh, and uh, what do you mean open? We started up. We starting. Uh, we started uh, accepting applications in those countries, and now our marketing team is just going country by country by country by country, and uh, and trying to conquer the markets by uh, working with influencers and and and, and media and uh, and performance marketing and you know and, and so on. So, considering monthly performance uh, reports of March and April of twenty twenty two. Um, do you see uh, more gains or loses there uh, for yeah. lemon hype? Yeah, last month we grew fifteen percent. This month we'll gr- we will grow uh, ten to twelve percent. Um, so we've been growing in, in in terms of that. But we, as a company, uh, our business is very uh, the whatever we do now, we will fill it in two or three months. Um, so in terms of marketing, both supply and demand is very. We're very dependent. Uh, we're, you know, our effect is takes time to to get it. So whatever whatever we're growing right now, we did three months ago, two three months ago, um, and whatever happens in May or in April, we're gonna see in two three months from now. But again, it looks like we're growing. Uh, we need to do a lot of optimization. We didn't work well the first months because March uh, was kind of kind of down. A lot, a lot of people were not available, and we didn't push them. To be available because we wanted people to first find safe place and you know uh, get comfortable so we uh, we never asked like you know where are you or what are you doing just they needed to 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 let their um their you know supervisor know that they are not available and they need to more time and we just could we could reroute the work and give it to someone else if, if this is a, a essential work and we killed most of the processes in the company except the initial ones so we can actually grow and make money uh, we didn't do anything new. We didn't work on innovation. We didn't work on product. Now, uh, <clears throat> and we even wanted to kill all our goals. We, we wanted to cancel our goals because we didn't want to p- push people. We want them to be in a calm, safe place and and not being thinking that we need to, you know, do something new to 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 reach the goals. 
but uh, interesting thing that then we realized that people need goals <laughs> and you know this war is already two months and we don't know when it's going to end and and if they have something, first of all, they're sure that they can keep as their job, and also they can accomplish something that will is 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 can be seen in you know for, uh, in, in the near future. I think this is important for just morale and uh, and, uh, and 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 you know your um, yeah for, for the morale for for your morale. If you can see the wins at least at work, you can you will feel much better. I know that many Ukrainians struggle with finding motivations for themselves for work. Um, do you have any kind of war life balance recipe that is uh, highly encouraged by Lemon.io inside organization? So basically what motivates you and your uh, colleagues um, at work the most um, these times? Yeah, I don't have anything like that. <laughs> we let people, we let people do their, you know, what, what how will they do this? Uh, and, um, yeah, someone uh, needs to work in the evening. Some people need to volunteer, you know, and we let them do that. Um, but I, I, no, no recipes, nothing, not nothing smart I can say. But again, like <clears throat> we try to say that you know the the work is not a center of your life, but it is because you spend most of the time there. So if it is a center of your life and you spend most of the time, it has to have it has to be purposeful. So we uh, we always had a purpose. We always try to. To, to, to go beyond the the, the you know the, the money goal and like uh, last year we saw that we already uh, that Ukrainian developers earned 10 million dollars through us and it was significant so people feel that they're part of this 10 million dollars were earned by Ukrainian developers through our platform um, and now even now like you know they they come to us to work on the purpose that is um, most of the money go to Ukraine we do right now. Like this month, we're going to do something like 1.3 million in GMV. Uh, most of the money will go to developers. Still, 90% of developers who earn through us are Ukrainians. They're either in Ukraine or, you know, Ukrainians outside of Ukraine. Um, the rest of the money, like, you know, all the salaries go, almost all the salaries go to Ukraine. There are a few Ukrainians who live outside of Ukraine. Um, and the rest of the money they will make after the tax and everything go to go to uh, foundations that help our army and um, uh, and 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 yeah help, help the army. So they, they see the purpose and they you know it's it's their achievement. It's not a, it's not a company achievement. It's not something good that we did. At a, it, you know it's achievement of a person and they, they see the purpose and they they feel great. That's why that all the wins. I mean a car uh, every. Um, every founder, you know, you have to, you have to, um, um, uh, how to say this, um, you have to show off every little win you have in the company, because when people feel the wins, they, they will do more things that will get to the wins. And, uh, it's very important to be encouraging this, you know, at work and, and, and have, and, and show people that they, um, that they, first of all, they're safe. And they can have their jobs, and they will keep the remain their salaries, but also that they accomplish something and they reach some goals, and this is very important for for, for morale. These were such inspiring words that not only people who are um, experienced in the war should hear, but also just regular employees in any companies um, where there are so many things that. Are wanted to be achieved um, and people that are, I mean, expected to do this. I am grateful for you to uh, take time here to talk and I'm really thankful for sharing the experience your company is going through uh, during these times. I really wish uh, the best for all of you, uh, for everyone who is keeping the economy of Ukraine and just everyone's, you know, um, mood a little bit boosted. <laughs> uh, and uh, all I want to say is glory to Ukraine. Thank you so much, Alexander. Sure. Thank you too. It was a pleasure. And that will be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching or listening to us, depending on what platform did you 
you chose for um, checking out our podcast, I remind you that all the links to the uh, platforms where it works in my machine is available are always attached to the description boxes. Also, we will really appreciate if you subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media such as LinkedIn or Instagram to uh, not miss any of our updates. I see you soon and you enjoy your day. Bye-bye.